Rogers from CinemaBlend.com. And I'm Nathaniel Rogers from TheFilmExperience.net. And we're here in Nathaniel's kitchen, where to celebrate Julia and Julia, Nathaniel's going to make me an omelet. Because, well, I was inspired by the food of the movie, I didn't exactly learn how to cook an omelet, so he is going to feed me for today. Uh, it came out last weekend, or it did really well. It made a little over $20 million, which is really good for a chick flick this time of year. Though it didn't make as much as Mamma Mia. No. It's a shame. And I really, I actually thought it was going to do better. People yeah. seem surprised it did well, but I thought the foodie aspects it would for sure. Yeah, like no one ever expects chick flicks to do well, and then they're always like, oh, Meryl Streep is still a big draw, and it's like the same cycle every summer. But we were, we were just talking before we turned the camera on about how we both saw it a while ago, and one of the fun things since it came out, or since we've known other people who've seen it, is just everyone else really enjoying it too, how it's become this thing that everyone can join together yeah. and say, yes, Meryl Streep, Stanley Tucci. It's the communal aspects of, uh, of cooking yeah, that, yeah. Plays, that plays really well into the fact that it's a fun movie. Yeah, yeah, it makes you, like, you come out of it feeling like you've spent, like, you've spent time at a dinner party with friends or something like that, as opposed to just, you know, learning about Julia Child and, like, the struggles that she's been through and that kind of thing. Yeah. But, like, that's a really smart move. I mean, they, yeah, they could have gone with a traditional biopic, uh, but we both think it was, you know, even if the movie's had a great movie, it was yeah. a better idea to make it light and frothy. Yeah, and we, we, we've talked about how, it, like, it's not a traditional biopic in a lot of ways because of the Julie Powell sections, because it switches between Julia Child's life and then Julie Powell having this completely different, less glamorous life in New York. And uh, the Julie Powell sections are really the weaker parts by pretty much all estimates. It's not that... Uh, you know, not that Amy Adams isn't delightful, but it's not nearly as much fun to spend time with her. If it hadn't been there, it would have been a much more traditional biopic, I think. Yeah. And there isn't, in, in neither story, is there a lot of conflict? Yeah, yeah. Or, or in the case of Julia Childs, the conflict is very sort of stretched out. It's sort of the same conflict. Yeah, and there's like a, there's a, a there's a concrete period. goal at the end of it, where Julie Powell goes into writing this book, being like, "I'm going to change my life," and you're not really clear on how that's going to work. And her book comes out off screen; it all happens after the movie's over. And clearly, Julie Powell, the real Julie Powell's life, is very different now. But we don't really see how that manifests itself within the movie. No. And I was reading; I don't remember whose review I was reading, but it was someone pointing out that the real Julie Powell is like acerbic and she curses a lot and she. You know, has a pretty, like, she's not just like a sweet Nora Ephron heroine. And Nora Ephron has turned the Amy Adams version of the character into this much more generic person. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Well, like, if you read if you read the book, she's always talking, like, she's making off-color jokes and stuff like that. Um, and that would, it would be kind of interesting to see, to have Amy Adams playing a character like that. Like, she's not just a nice girl. And even though she talks in the movie about how she's becoming a bitch and she's alienating her husband... Um, you don't really see it. It's more, it's more telling than it's the show. Yeah, and the, the bitch parts, because of the way they've characterized her, come across as whiny. Yeah. Rather than, you know, traditional. Like, it might have been more interesting if, if she was bitchier rather than whinier. Yeah, definitely. So you want to you talk about what you're cooking? Oh, yeah. I was going to start, we were going to walk you through the whole thing, um, but my kit, but my, well, my kitchen's small, <laughs> but my refrigerator, it's, I was going to open it, pull ingredients out, but then I thought you, we would have Requiem for a Dream <laughs> flashes, because my, my fridge is really scary. Oh, man. So, <laughs> it would devour us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I, I'm just sauteing, like, some goodies to put in the omelets. We have uh, green pepper and onion and chorizo, which is not very French. No, but, no. But also delicious. No, and I actually did learn to cook omelets watching uh, the French chef. Yeah? Um, I don't cook them the way Julia Child tells you to, but that's how I learned how what to do it. What did you do? What did you do differently? Well, for example, like, she, I just have butter in here right now, which I'm going to take off. She has you do, like, this the whole time with the egg. Uh-huh. So it's, like, really, it becomes, it looks almost scrambled as uh -huh. you're doing it, but I prefer to just let it, like, just simmer. Just let it sit. And then, like, like, do the flip so it's, like, a... No, we might have to. <laughs> no, I might have to get a handheld chop for the. So here we have a pan full of melted butter, just as Julia Child would have wanted it, and then a pan with the peppers and the onions and the chorizo. So are we almost ready for the eggs? Um, we are. I just have to find them. Don't show this okay. side of the kitchen. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, I'll, I'll stand over here. <laughs> Only one side of the kitchen was uh, was 
was ready for it. Was approved for broadcast. Yeah. That was a lot of eggs. Yeah, I, I, eat lo I eat lots of eggs because of learning to make omelets. Really? Breakfast is basically the only thing I can make. Hey, breakfast is the most important so meal of the day. I can do pancakes, I can do French toast, I can do all these things from scratch and eggs, but that's all I can cook. I wish I could make French toast. Does Julia Shadow have a recipe for French toast? I'm sure she does. Oh, this is glorious. It's all in the rest. Yeah? So what would Julia Child talk like? What like does she just do the running narrative? I haven't watched much of The French Chef. Does she do the running narrative of what she's cooking? Does yeah. she talk about all the random stuff? Or yeah, she she does it. I mean, the great thing about it is she's so nonchalant about everything. Yeah. Like if she makes a mistake, she's just like, "Oops." Whereas Martha Stewart, who is like basically, I think the only modern person who's at all equivalent mm -hmm. in terms of who people. Look too so too. the way Julia Childs would do it, you shake it like this, and it, mm -hmm. and it ends up looking almost scrambled. Yeah. But I don't do it that way. But I, I did learn from that. But I think that's the, the the thing with cooking in general. You know, I'm not a foodie, but I've seen other people do this. You start with a recipe, and then you just learn to experiment. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I have a bunch of foodie friends. I have like more than one friend with a food blog. So I'm always feeling like inferior in their eyes because I cook, but I can't, you know. Yeah, so this, like, Julie would just have you shake it. Mm -hmm. I just pick up the edges to let the runny parts oh, go I underneath. I see, I see. And that way I can just fold it in on itself. You want it a tiny bit runny, but if it's too runny, you get salmon. <laughs> see, I never know that line either. I really like runny eggs, but I just kind of have stopped feeling salmon. Uh huh. But see, now yeah. you're, you're getting closer to scrambled eggs even like that, too. Yeah, but she she would have you just do this so much that it gets whipped into, like, a frenzy. So doesn't that make it lighter, though? Like, and fluffier? Yes, it does. So in a way, it's better. It's just I'm not as confident about that. Yeah, I mean, the odds of you slopping it all over the side. Right. And so with, with me, I just put the ingredients in. I'm saving a little bit for myself. I'm going to also eat a little bit. So... <laughs> So with me, I just, this is the part I'm not very good at. <laughs> See, fold it over. Mm -hmm. And it becomes more like a quesadilla. But anyway. But where does the food, like, where does the stuff in the middle come in when she's just flipping it? The episode of The French Chef where she does it, she mm -hmm. just, is just an egg. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. I guess that's, is that an American thing where we just add a bunch of stuff? Yeah, and else? also it's kind of like similar to crepes, where you can have, like, parties where you, the ingredients change so you have like all these little pans like this because uh -huh. crepes are just as fast got it and you can like drop different ingredients mm -hmm. into the different... so this is for katie all right and there's our completed julia child inspired omelet <laughs> and that is what we're doing instead of a real review of julia right. and julia and the thing is she would approve because martha stewart would not approve because there are so many little mistakes mm -hmm. and it doesn't look perfect but the fun thing about julia child is it's all about enjoyment yeah and that's why Meryl Streep was the perfect casting for it as well. Mm hmm because she's having a great time. She's having a great time, and she's and she always does that with performances where you feel like her joy of cooking. Yeah. Or her joy of cooking. <laughs> she always does Not that the with, joy of cooking. <laughs> she always does that with performances where you feel the joy in the performance. So in mm -hmm. this case, it's a joy double because she's actually playing someone who's joyful. Yeah. So we would both recommend Julie and Julia, correct? Yep. All right. And then green pepper and onion. How do people eat on camera and not, <laughs> and not like show off their food? Um, this is great, and I'm grateful for Julia Child for both teaching us how to make these and giving us a movie as an excuse to make them on camera. All right, I'm Katie Rich from Cinema Blunt, and holding the camera is Daniel Rogers from thefilmexperience.net. And we will probably not be cooking food next time, but we'll see anyway.